In recent videos, I've uh, discussed about uh, the implementation of uh, different functions for uh, vectors and matrices, also um, in the implementation of a sigmoid function and the derivative of the sigmoid function, all in assembly language. So uh, I was thinking that uh, these are the basic stuff that goes into an artificial neural network. So what uh, will it take to actually implement an artificial neural network entirely in assembly language? I'm going to discuss this in this video. But first, a very brief uh, introduction. What is an artificial neural network? Well, it's comprised of different layers. We usually have an input layer, an output layer, and zero, one, or multiple hidden layers. And uh, each block in this diagram is an artificial uh, neuron. So uh, the basic building block of an uh, artificial neural network is the artificial neuron. And these are grouped into layers. And uh, each uh, neural network must have an output layer and an input layer, but uh, the input layer is uh, somewhat uh, very easy to implement because it's just an input value. And then it's possible to add a hidden layer or more hidden layers, but these are not uh, necessary in all situations. So you need at least an output layer. So let's take a look at uh, an artificial neuron. So what's happening, it has a series of uh, inputs. These can be uh, external inputs or inputs from a previous layer. Uh, then it performs a weighted sum for each of the inputs. It's uh, computing a weight and then this goes into a sum. And then it uses an activation function, and this would be the output of the neuron, which can be uh, the output of the network if this is a neuron in the output layer. So this goes like this. Um, we have uh, the output, that is a function, this is the activation function uh, of a weighted sum uh, based on the inputs. And uh, in some cases we talk of a bias and this is a value for which uh, the neuron keeps weight and we can see this as part of this sum. If we have an additional uh, x0 input which is always 1. So this would account for bias. So uh, in certain equations you see here plus b, but we don't really need it because uh, weight zero uh, will be treated as the bias. So uh, we have a so-called forward pass where uh, data flows from input to output. And this is known as the forward pass and basically we need uh, just to compute uh, this uh, function. Uh, but because we have multiple neurons, not single neuron, uh, we compute these functions, uh, this function in terms of vectors and matrices. So in this case, uh, a layer will uh, have a weight matrix which stores the uh, weights for all the neurons. And we have an input vector which stores the inputs for all the neurons and it will produce an uh, output vector which will be uh, the output for all the neurons. As I mentioned in the introduction, I recently did a number of uh, videos about uh, vectors, uh, matrix operations, uh, sigmoid function and so on. So if you haven't watched this, uh, it would be a good idea to take a look at them. But anyway, uh, let's see what we can use from what is implemented uh, in order to, const uh, to construct a program uh, for the forward pass. So we have 
vector initialization, matrix initialization. Remember, the weights is a matrix, x is a vector. Uh, we have a function that multiplies a vector with uh, the lines in a matrix. So uh, we can use this to implement the operation here. We have the sigmoid function implementation, which is commonly used as an activation function in neural networks, so we can use it. We have also the vector implementation for the sigmoid function, so we can use this here. Uh, and we also have uh, functions that allows us to see the result to print uh, on the console the resulting vector or the matrix of weights. So, uh, I think we have pretty much everything for the forward pass. Now, uh, after computing the forward pass and obtaining an output, uh, we need to see um, what error we have compared to an expected output. So, this is um, known as error computation, and in some cases it is known as uh, loss or cost function. So, basically we have an error function which uh, takes as parameters uh, the predicted output and the expected output and will return a value. Uh, and again, I've already discussed about the mean squared error. I have a video about uh, implementing mean squared error uh, using vectors. So again, this is uh, something that I've already implemented and uh, MSC is again a common loss function in uh, neural networks. And then uh, we need to update uh, the weights uh, in order to minimize uh, the error. So uh, this is known as the backward pass uh, or back propagation and uh, we are usually employing gradient descent. So how this works, uh, the weights uh, at time t plus 1 are based uh, on the weights at time t uh, minus uh, the learning rate uh, times the gradient uh, based on the error function. So in this equation, uh, eta is uh, the learning rate, which is a constant, uh, and we have the error function that discussed. So uh, in the case of the mean squared error, uh, the error function looks like this. And uh, here uh, the expected output uh, will be provided, while the predicted output is uh, basically the application of the sigmoid function on the output layer. And the sigmoid and uh, the output layer, uh, the SO term here, is uh, basically a weighted sum, as uh, I showed previously. So now if we are going to compute the derivatives, I'm not going into a lot of mathematical details, but using the chain rule, we can decompose uh, the partial derivative with regard to each individual weight into a product of three terms and uh, when computing uh, these three terms uh, we end up with this uh, formula here. Uh, someone may uh, say that well maybe uh, here uh, we are lacking uh, 2 over n or something like that but uh, these are constants and uh, we don't need uh, to worry with the constants because this can be uh, incorporated in the uh, learning rate constant. So we only need to worry with uh, things that actually need to be uh, computed. So uh, this formula here maybe is not 100% mathematically correct, the missing uh, constant, but this constant uh, will be included uh, in the learning rate. So, 
let's take a look at uh, this. Uh, what assembly language functions we have. Uh, for example, we have the derivative uh, of the sigmoid function, which is uh, this term here. Uh, obviously, uh, we can compute uh, vector uh, multiplication, the dot product. So, putting it all together, uh, considering a very simple uh, neural network which uh, has uh, for example two neurons uh, only two neurons here so this would be uh, only the output layer without any hidden layer uh, we have the input as I mentioned uh, there will be a special input uh, for the bias weight so this is constant one we have the weights matrix, so in this case uh, the input is a vector of size 3 because it includes the bias. Uh, the output uh, in this case is a vector of size 2. Uh, we also need another vector for uh, the expected values, again of size 2. And we have uh, W, which is the weights matrix, which would be of size 2 times 3. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the forward computation, which uh, we can use existing uh, functions, the calculation of sigmoid of your vector, and uh, the multiplication of uh, matrix lines with uh, vector. And then uh, for the loss, again, we have squared error which is implemented over two vectors and finally for the backward phase uh, we have uh, these functions here and uh, I think we are still missing a couple of functions uh, for example we don't have a vector difference or a matrix difference but these are very easy to implement uh, we also don't have an outer product of two vectors, so this is something that needs to be implemented. Uh, but the rest are uh, actually uh, functions that I've already presented. So in the next uh, videos I'm going to first implement uh, the missing functions and then uh, I will try to combine them uh, into a uh, working artificial neural networks. So if you are interested in that, don't forget to like and subscribe to get notified. And so see you next time. Bye.